Hello everybody and welcome to another oversized knockoff review thanks to the team over at TF Direct. Today I'm taking a look at the eagerly anticipated offering from Wei Zhang, part of their Robot Force oversized line. This is the MPP27. Once again they've got their designer Black Apple to take a look at the original Ironhide and see how they can perfect it as well as enlarging it. This is General Red Iron. <laughs> That's a very uh, imaginative name. Taking a quick look at the back of the box, we've got him in his bot mode, vehicle mode, and we have some of the accessories that are included. And very much like we get with the MPP-10, we have a fold-out window, and we have Ironhide in his styrofoam box, along with his accessories. And we actually had these loose in a baggie. I'm not sure if they were an afterthought, but <laughs> hey ho, we get the big instruction manual. And once again, it's part of the Model World Group, uh, as is Model Wizard and rest of the Oizhang Force. And here we have General Red Iron outside of his box, along with his Super Weapons box. Now I've added everything onto the tray, and there's quite a lot. Now there is a space. Uh, just on here to place uh, another weapon. Uh, I could probably place this one on there. I think I meant to have another gun with the set. If you look at the instructions, we get another gun in that place there. I could be completely wrong. I could have knocked it down somewhere. Right, before we cover uh, Ironhide himself, let's just take a look at his accessories. It's much the same as what we got with the official figure. We get some chromed up missiles here and we get a nice little launcher which can go up and over his shoulder. We get the alternative kind of angry looking face for Ironhide. We get two of these standard blasters. We get a radar dish, two of these nozzles, two additional firing hands, two of these hand attachments. We get Ironhide's jetpack, Nice little red hot flames coming out of the back there. A larger rifle. We have the smaller of the weapons. This is a tool, I believe, isn't it? Oh God, I'd have to go back and check all the names again from the original figure, but uh, we get a lot. <laughs> and then we get this chromed up little beauty as well. This does have the darker handle on it. I believe that's because it's just that darker, stronger kind of plastic that's been used for the chrome accessories. Now, Ironhide himself, straight off the bat, he looks and feels, in my opinion, easily on par with the MPP-10. This is only the second unique figure that Wei Zhang have released as part of the MPP line. The first obviously being the MP-10. Uh, the likes of the Evasion Optimus that was released as part of their M010203, the movie series. Uh, so this is their second offering as part of this line. And uh, Ironhide's good. He really does feel the part. He is a solid figure. And that gloss they've used is gorgeous. Bringing in your regular Ironhide, it's not just the height which is a glaring difference. You may notice that Black Apple has worked his magic once again and got rid of those side pod sections which bugged so many people about the original Ironhide release. Now on top of that, the colors are slightly different. Uh, it's a slightly darker tone they've used for their version as well as the chest piece, the chest screen, as again, is a darker tone. Due to the new configuration of the transformation, we no longer have this hanging down bumper section, which actually makes him look slightly slimmer, in my opinion. And I've also included a nice space for an Autobot insignia. So a nice sticker should easily rectify that. As far as sculpt goes on the arms, etc., they look very similar. But again, we do have a much darker plastic being used on the hands. Checking out his side-on profile, I was somewhat worried. I feared that the back section may look 
rather out of place now that they've modified the transformation but in my personal opinion i feel it actually now looks a lot cleaner that backpack section has really been tidied up we no longer have the tires around the back here they're now located just at the back there as to is the front bumper now one of the biggest gripes people have with this mold is the elongated face i don't think Wai Zhang have really nailed that look in my opinion it's probably the eyes i believe the eyes are probably too long uh, the face doesn't look half as bad in hand as it does i know there's a video already out there of this guy uh, i believe the guy shooting is chinese uh, but the camera work isn't great and it does make the face look a lot more elongated than what it actually is but that being said it's definitely not perfect uh, personally i do prefer the shouting face so if i just remove this exactly the same as we would with the official release and then bring in this alternative face there i definitely think that's better than their initial kind of hmm very bland <laughs> look to him but that being said it's still not right i don't know exactly what it is that's bothering me about it i think it may be the shape of the eyes maybe or maybe the shape of the chin something about that isn't as clean as the official release i think the nose is too long i think that's what it is they've made the nose too long and in turn made the mouth too square and they've, they've just got the face wrong haven't they <laughs> they've got the face wrong it doesn't quite look right uh, it's not the be all and end all in my opinion um somebody like dr wu i'd imagine would come out with a nice fix for this or maybe wei zhang themselves will send out a fix they just need to do the head like takara did takara did a good job of the head i do like the angry face on here it's just a shame that hasn't really carried across because besides the head he looks and feels like a masterpiece figure only done in a much larger scale speaking of scale he weighs in at 450 grams that's 16.15 ounces and stands just under 11 inches that's around the 27 centimeter mark and with all of that added heft and weight he really does balance exceptionally well and he looks good doing it now the weapons change out the same way as what the original iron hide does we can flip the hands inside revealing this tab which allows us to attach the alternative hands just by sliding that peg onwards and the hands themselves they have a rather large tab going all the way at the base of the hand it's not this joint here you have to slide the weapon all the way in and then it will tab in nicely and then we can just bring in those fingers mainly for looks they don't really pay a vital part in holding the weapon in it's more cosmetic i don't know what it is about having ironhide at this scale but he just seems a lot more intimidating and that backpack look i mean he's definitely rocking that and for those of you wanting a scale comparison here he is alongside the mpp10 and of course the kuban bell oversized bumblebee you know i think they look pretty good together although i think the scale is slightly different to what we got with the official release i mean they have changed the scale slightly uh prime's uh, chest grill section comes up kind of to the top of the official Ironhide's shoulders and with the MPP-10 uh, top of his chest curl piece here uh, I know this angle is quite deceptive but if you get to my angle it's actually a few millimeter higher than Ironhide's shoulders so uh, there's not a great deal in it but in my personal opinion I think the Weizhang scale actually 
looks a fraction better. Let's take a look at Ironhide's articulation. The head can look upwards. Got a nice neck sculpting on there. A little bit more detail looks like on the neck there than what we got with the official figure. So we can look up and down by tilting it forwards. And we can look left and right. And of course we can pivot to the side. The shoulders are on a very nice ratchet joint. They come out to the side. love that joint we have an upper bicep rotation we have a 90 degree bend at the elbow coming down to the wrist it can rotate and we do get the fingers pinned all through that single point the waist can rotate uh, slight hindrance from those wheels at the back there but there's enough play to allow the torso to rotate fully round we don't get any abdominal crunch the hip skirts Move out of the way when we move the legs forwards and backwards and come out to the side. Lovely ratchets there. We get upper thigh rotation and we get a nice rotation on the upper knee. Lovely bend at the knee, just shy of 90 degrees. Again, on a very nice ratchet. We get a lot of die cast around these feet. And then we get a tilt to the left, to the right, forwards and backwards. So we've got enough going on there for some pretty dynamic running poses. So as it stands, I'm pretty impressed with the robot mode. It looks the part. I love the modifications that they've done. I like that the colors are slightly different. I think I still prefer the Takara red. It's more vibrant. But then again, I like the Wei Zhang gray. It's, uh, I think the darker gray really does suit the mold more. Uh, it's just a shame about that head sculpt. I know this could be the be all and end all for a lot of people, but it is just that faceplate which is slightly off and I can honestly see whether it's Wei Zhang themselves or another third party out there, they've got to do a face, they've got to do a better face sculpt. I mean, it's not gonna take a great deal, is it? So let's see how his vehicle mode fares. To transform him up, we'll start with his toes. We're going to rotate those 180 degrees. Rotate the leg at the knee joint and then push and collapse that inwards. Untab the outer leg section, bring that upwards and then, then bring this piece up and move this joint up and over to the side. Press and tab the side shell in so it holds into place and then bring the legs together there's this tab here and that's going to tab in with a very satisfying lock and then we can bring the rear bumpers down open up the panel on the arm bring this down and there is this double hinge section on the inside of the arms you want to rotate this so that this big huge gap is located on the rear rock the hinge upwards lift this tab up and that's going to allow this to sit quite comfortably on that shoulder you want to flip the fists inside close this off the clearance is minimal but it's clearance nonetheless and you want to bring the shoulder up bring this joint out and as we do so we're going to rotate this up and over and then bring these to the rear Coming around the rear here, this is where things get different because we didn't have any of this section with the original toy. You just want to untab this bumper. This is going to come out and basically it is on a pivoting hinge. The hinge pivots down. We can bring down the indicator for signal sections on both sides. Bring this piece down like this. We can then move these wheels down as we bring these down you're going to rock this hinge and then we can bring it back over on itself bring that up and then bring these two pieces together so we have something that looks like that as we go to bring this bumper section around the front you want to slide 
the torso down. That now allows the wheels to come around. With the front cab now located around his crotch section, you can't access this fully yet. You need to slide out this upper torso piece, rotate the head, and in turn, that untabs these shoulder sections. So we can bring this all the way back. You then straighten out this back piece, making sure that everything is as straight as it will go and this piece is on a double hinge and then as we collapse this down it will just sit quite comfortably on the underside there just between the hooks and the outer parts before we bring this torso over you can just untab the gray hinge and that allows us to rock this into the actual van itself and then as we do so rotate this piece around and the outer arm will now form the side cab windows. And before we push this piece down, just make sure that our wheels are located at the front, otherwise they're gonna get trapped between the front section and the top. We can then bring this down, and then it is literally a matter of bringing Einheit's head back so it clears the gap. And we are now going to go around making sure that every one of these tabs tabs in where it's meant to go. We can slide the wheels back to the front. This front loading section on the front of Einheit bends down and this bumper piece now slots in to that groove. Then last but not least, you wanna bring these wheels down from the underside and they're just gonna bend backwards on that hinge and then click back into place. Um, the only downside I found to this is I can't quite get this front panel to sit as I really want it to. Everything else holds together pretty nicely. It's a big solid lump. You can see some differences in the paint uh, where they've gone from die cast to plastic and then back to die cast again. It's not horrendous. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. You don't get the grumpy Autobot on the front there anymore either. You used to get that kind of strange face <laughs> that was apparent on the original version of Ironhide. It got all this chrome on the front here though. And all in all, I think it's a really nice piece. It's been a long time coming, um, but, and, uh, Mai Zhang again have delivered. And here he is, fully transformed up. Uh, it's a good, big, solid lump. I think I've got everything away there as it should. Maybe my tires aren't quite in the correct location. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the instructions aren't amazing. I would have thought we'd had rubber tires, but they are uh, slightly softer plastic, but they are plastic nonetheless. That's a little bit disappointing, but I assume uh, I'd rather that than make something that's perishable. Uh, he rolls quite nicely. You can still fit his weapons in the top. Uh, yeah, it's a very good version of Ironhide. And if we bring in the official masterpiece scale, uh, they don't actually look completely untoward. He's still a very massive piece, but uh, it's definitely passable as a standalone vehicle. Here he is alongside the MPP-10 in his truck mode. Again, that's a very nice configuration and they have used a different shade of red as well. Uh, it's actually a lot closer to the kind of MP-10 convoy, the MPP-10 red, than he is to his official MP-27 counterpart. Now, height-wise, he just about fits inside the MPP-10's trailer, although there are some little notches on the underside here, so I had to put him in first and then close it off. But yeah, he fits in there and it does look the bee's knees. And here they are all together. Now, I'm not sure of the exact measurements of the Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, it's probably too big to tell you the truth. I mean, the wheels themselves, the axis is about exactly the same as Ironhide. I'm pretty sure that the camber does have a much larger chassis. But that being said, these three do look good together. I may have to display them uh, for now in their vehicle modes because I'm kind of running out of space, especially with these oversized ones. KBB done a fairly good offering with this guy. But Wei Zhang and Robot Hero, they're definitely up there with the top 
oversizes without a doubt and both of which do add those little extras which really do make their products shine. Wei Zhang with these little modifications with this hip skirt section and the front of the grill and Robot Hero with the likes of their Seekers. They've included their extra chest pegs and all of that extra die cast with their little grit teeth on the back support struts. Now let's just bring in the Masterpiece Ironhide. It looks kind of like a bring your child to work day, doesn't it? Uh, the color difference doesn't really come across that much when they're both in vehicle mode. You can see that this is a much deeper red. Uh, this is slightly lighter. Uh, the actual difference in panels between the die cast and the plastic is a lot less noticeable when you get him transformed up into his vehicle mode. Uh, I would have liked the rubber tires, uh, but all in all, it's a very nice piece. And I think their choice with the darker blue and the way they modified it in the front end section, I think it was very well thought out. And overall, I think it's been very nicely executed. Let's just take a quick look on the underside and see how things have changed. We now have this additional piece here. Uh, other than that, we get a little bit more space and everything else is hidden away exactly the same. So with those nice modifications, they've not only made Ironhide more streamlined, but in my opinion, he's also far more poseable and more in proportion. To nitpick, I maybe would have liked some wipers that move. Uh, I was never a fan of the gray piece on top. I know it was kind of accurate to the animation, uh, but hey ho. At least these are leaps and bounds away from the G1 toy version of Heinheide, and that is a good thing. Would have liked maybe some wheels or something for the tray, or maybe uh, make somebody make a third party one of these, which transforms up into a trailer, which can be towed, kind of like those surf trailers, which the campers tow. Uh, but that for another day. Maybe that's a job for somebody like Dr. Wu. Uh, all in all, very good figure. Didn't like the face sculpt, slightly elongated, doesn't really capture Ironhide in his truest form. But I urge you to overlook the face sculpt. That's something that we can rectify. This product as a whole is exceptionally well done. And once again, Wei Zhang have delivered to a high standard. Thanks again to TF Direct for making this review possible. I hope you've found it useful. If you have, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, share and subscribe. I've included a Wei Zhang playlist up here so you can check out other cool products in the line and until next time from myself and general red iron thanks for watching ah goodbye